3D Flying Airplane Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be doing a, it's a 4D airplane that is on a very, very long nail. And the airplane is on a little track that's got little beads on it and wires so it can slide. And so you can slide the airplane down like he's flying and you can slide it back. And there's cotton clouds and it's just light blue and it's, the airplane itself kind of reminds me of Charlie Brown, the uh, Peanuts airplane that Snoopy is because it's got that kind of vibe to it and the propeller on the front of the airplane spins <laughs> this was so much fun it's not something wearable but if you're looking for something to occupy an afternoon definitely give this a go i hope you like it and don't forget to click subscribe to see my future videos as well so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to be painting my nail with a layer of a one-step gel polish and this is a, this is madam glam so it's not actually one step but it doesn't have a tacky layer when you cure it and so i'm just applying a coat of that over the entire nail as a base. So now with a light blue color acrylic that is very close to the color of that gel polish I was using, I'm going to be sculpting three sections of acrylic on the nail. So the first one is going to go straight down the center and like I said you want these to be nice and thin but still have a little thickness to them if that makes sense. So you don't want them to be very wide. When I say nice and thin I mean that way. You don't want them to be wide but you want them to have a little height to them if that makes sense sense and just try to keep it going straight down the nail as straight as you can if it is not perfect you can always file it in a moment uh, but who really wants to file so try to keep it as thin as you can just from the get-go make it easier and so i'm just gonna do that keep it going down and this nail is extremely long it is more of a nail that you would use to practice or to display art than it would be to ever wear um yeah i don't know maybe you could wear it maybe i don't know not me I wouldn't wear one quite this long. Um, so I'm just going to try to fix that up a little bit and add any places because every time you put down a new bead it might not smooth out perfectly and blend in with the last one. So I'm just going to a little more acrylic where I feel like it needs it like that because I'm going to be filing it. I want it to have extra space, not any low spots. High spots are a little better. So now I'm going to be filing it. I know it's so hard to see what I'm doing just because of the way that the nails or the way that it looks and it lines up. So I'm gonna file the sides of that bar that we created down the center, and I'm also gonna file the surface of it just a little bit to smooth it out. In this particular circumstance, the actual shape isn't as crucial as sometimes. So then I took, and I just set a bead that I'm gonna be using later on in it to see how wide I need that little track to be. So then I know I can sculpt the rest of the way on the sides. So using that same blue acrylic, I'm going to be covering the edges of the nail with some more but making sure that I leave a gap between the middle section of acrylic and this edge that is at least wide enough for that bead to be comfortable in you don't want it to be having to you know like stick through you want to make sure it just glides through so you leave enough space so it's got a comfortable amount of room so then just adding that acrylic over it over the edge this these acrylic stripes are really where the strength is going to come in I know that my nail tip the tip itself, the plastic, is thicker than a lot of the other ones, so that in itself does have some strength, but it's still plastic and acrylic is still much stronger. And because there is an acrylic over the entire nail, this is going to start out a little bit more compromised. The strength is not going to be nearly as strong as if there was an overlay over this entire thing, but what can you do? So I'm just going to add that. If you did want this to have a lot more strength, it would be it would end up being a little thicker, but you could have done an overlay with blue acrylic instead of the gel polish in the beginning. So I'm going to be doing more filing, just like I did with the middle section. I'm just going to go over the entire thing, file the surface, try to get that on the smoother side. Because of the way I'm adding the clouds and everything, if it isn't perfect, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. So now with sponge, I'm going to be sponging on some white paint just to give that blue background a little bit of a cloud feel. My gel polish and my blue acrylic weren't exactly the same shade, so that's also going to help mask the difference there. And now I'm going to apply a thin layer of gel sealer and cure it. The reason I want to make sure it's thin is because I don't want to flood those nice grooves that we made. So now I'm going to be sculpting my airplane. I'm going to begin, I'm going to make it red. You can make your airplane any color you want. Um... I don't know, I thought red would show up really nicely against the blue, so I went that route. And so I'm just going to take and start out with a teardrop that's almost upside down. That's going to be the main part of the plane. And then I'm going to be sculpting the wings. So I'm going to begin like that and sort of curve it down. So 
it's like a really, really wide triangle. So the bottom is flat, and then you, you want to have the two wings come to an angle. So like I said, it's just a little bit of a triangle. And so then I'm going to be also sculpting the tail, the tail fins, just like that. So add one that's going to go flat across the bottom, and then add the part that goes up. That's a little bit more of a triangle, whereas the one that goes flat is going to be an oval. And so now I'm going to go back through and I'm going to add a second layer of acrylic over everything. That first layer, especially when you're sculpting on the nail tip, or I mean not on the nail tip, on the nail form backing, because the nail form backing is slippery, which is why you can get the acrylic off later on, but because it is slippery, it really likes to make the acrylic thin because the acrylic spreads out. And so as you can see, you can tell by looking at the side how thick it is and see. And because this is very three dimensional, I want to make sure that it has enough rounded of a shape on the plane so it doesn't look like it's oddly flat, if that makes sense. I definitely want to have the right kind of plane shape. And what we're sculpting now is going to be the bottom of the plane. It's not going to have, it's not the top, it's going to be, well, the bottom. And I'm going to add a second layer of acrylic over the wings and the tail just like that, just to make sure that all these parts are thick enough that they're not gonna be so delicate once you start taking and putting it together. Then with silver acrylic, I'm gonna make the propeller that goes on the front. So I'm just gonna make three little pieces that kind of pull out like so for the different blades of the propeller. And then I'm gonna poke a hole in the center with a piece of wire, just like that, so that you can put wire through it later on so that it can spin. And I'm gonna add another layer of silver acrylic, once again, for strength because all of these parts, if you're going to be moving and playing with them and using them, you want to make sure that they're not so delicate that they're just going to break on you. So now I'm going to be assembling my plane. So I'm going to put down a little bead of red acrylic and set the wings on top of there. So I'm holding the plane as it goes. So the rounded part that we made before is going to be the bottom of the plane. And this flat part is going to be in the middle. But then I'm also going to add a little more acrylic and start assembling the tail of the plane like that, putting that down, holding it in place until that acrylic sets enough that it's gonna hold it. And now just wait to add the rest of the tail until you get a little further. I'm gonna add more acrylic over the top of my plane, giving the top of it that rounded shape that goes with the base. And make sure that you poke in a piece of wire just um, at this point because that's what you're gonna put the propeller on later on. And then once you get down towards the tail of the plane, add the rest of that just like so. So it has two parts going to the sides and then that one part sticking up. And now I'm adding more red acrylic. And this does take quite a bit of red acrylic because it's a solid piece. And so you just have to keep adding parts until it's all nice and smooth and rounded and looks like a plane. And this is probably the reason I didn't really think about it that I'm out of red acrylic right now. Man, who knew? I'm gonna have to I'm going to have to put in an order. Anyways, totally irrelevant, just me thinking out loud. So after I've got the top in the nice rounded shape, I'm going to go through and I'm going to sort of smooth out the seam between the top of the plane and the bottom with a couple beads that go just right over the middle there. Smooth that out. That's also going to add a lot more strength to the connection of them and make sure that it all looks nice and purdy. And so now to add the cockpit, I'm going to just take a bead of clear acrylic and set that right about between the wings. And then I'm just going to keep pushing it in from side to side to give it a nice rounded dome shape. And I know at the moment my brand of clear acrylic doesn't look super clear, but once you add gel sealer on it, it will. So then I'm going to string on the propeller on the front of the plane, trim off the excess wire, and then put a piece of plastic wrap. I am having a bit of issues here. Put that over the piece of wire that's on the front of it so that the wire sticks through the plastic wrap, but the acrylic underneath it is all protected and then add a tiny bead of silver acrylic on the end of that piece of wire and then let that set just like that you might have to hold it maybe you can set it aside you want to make sure that that piece of acrylic that's on the saran wrap doesn't get bumped and you can cut the plastic wrap and pull that away and your propeller should spin because that bead on top of the acrylic has not touched it so now take two pieces of wire and cut them to the length of the two grooves that we made in the nail and this is a relatively thin wire. So just kind of make sure that they're nice and straight. And then I'm going to attach them with clear acrylic. I'm going to start at the top. So just put down a little bit of clear acrylic. I don't know where I went right there. I don't know. Who knows what's going on? Why am I off camera? These are very important questions. I started over. That's what I did. I wonder. I, I don't know why. I, I'm not sure what happened. So anyways, put down a bit of clear acrylic. Set in the piece of wire. And then do the top ones first. So just do the top. Don't worry about doing... Uh, sealing in the wire at the bottom yet. We'll do that in a moment. So just put those on, set them down, lay them there for a second. 
let that acrylic set and then add a little more on top of it really to seal in that wire so that it's not going to pop out on you you want to make sure that everything here is nice and secure and i know it's not blending in super well but we're going to add some cotton later on that'll cover that up so then string two beads on each piece of wire so just take and add two beads on there like that and make sure that they slide up and down the nail and then after you have it and you know that they're going to move freely go through and seal up the bottom of the wire with a little bit more of that blue acrylic so just cover up the ends of the wire so that they are attached and the beads can't escape. So now with wire that's heavier, I'm going to take two pieces that aren't very big and I'm going to form them into V shapes like that. So I've got that V and then I'm going to take a piece of poster putty and knead that into a nice flat shape and I'm going to poke in the wire so that they overlap like that and the points create an X and that's going to be the stand for my plane. I'm going to secure the top of that with clear acrylic so that those pieces of wire aren't going to move on me. And then after I have them so that they're nice and set in that nice shape, I'm going to set them on the nail and make sure that they fit with the beads. And with another piece of poster putty set on there, I'm going to just have that on there temporarily to hold that top piece in place while I attach it to the beads. So there should be a bead on the end of each of the pieces of that thicker wire. And as you're basically gluing the beads to the, the thicker wire with clear acrylic make sure that none of it hits that thinner wire that's the track of the nail if that makes sense hopefully you can see what I'm doing and it all seems totally logical to you so after you've got that and the acrylic has set make sure the acrylic is set before you start messing with it with the tweezers you can pull out that poster putty and then you should be able to move that up and down the track easily and then attach your plane to the top of the, that little stand with some clear acrylic hold that until it's set and then I'm going to go through and I'm going to start painting my plane. I'm going to add all kinds of little details to it with yellow. So this is all very uh, primary. So I'm using primary colors this entire design, blue, red, yellow. But if you have favorite colors or you're making this for someone and you can use their favorite colors, go ahead and switch that out for how, whatever color combination you want just to make it more personalized to you. But I'm just going to add all kinds of little decorations with yellow. And as I was doing this, I didn't realize it at the time, but later on I realized I was using multi-surface paint. I couldn't figure out why my paint didn't seem to be very opaque. Well, that's the reason. It was multi-surface and it was really messing with my head. And that's what happens when you store all your paint in the same place and you don't really pay attention when you're grabbing the bottles. Yep. That's the reason. So then I'm just going to add some stripes on it with yellow as well. And just add all kinds of little details and shapes and so yeah because I was using that multi-surface and it it isn't as opaque and it doesn't dry as fast it was all kinds of don't use multi-surface paint for things that don't need it I mean if you're painting glass or something obviously go with that because you don't want to flake off but for this not the best idea I'm also going to be outlining the cockpit with just a thin black line just to really define it make sure it shows up because otherwise it's clear and it almost disappears so just make sure that yeah just like that so now I'm going to take it I'm going to kill a cotton ball so I'm just going to take a cotton ball I'm going to pull on it until I've got a nice little bit of fluff that's loose and I'm going to take nail glue and I'm going to spread that all around the top of the nail at the cuticle lay down some of that cotton press it in make my little cloud I'm going to do that again at the tip. That's going to hide the little bit of acrylic that's keeping those pieces of wire in place and just make sure that all looks nice and cloudy. And I'm also going to take a little bit more of this nice fluffy cotton and I'm going to wrap it around the little stand that the plane is sitting on. So I'm just going to put some glue on a couple of the pieces of wire, lay down some of that cotton, and then go through and keep wrapping it around until it is fully around that wire base. And so now I'm going to be painting my plane with a matte top coat, not the cockpit, but pretty much everything else. That's going to protect that acrylic paint since, well, usually you'd have to do that. I wouldn't have because it's multi-surface. But then I'm going to add gel sealer to the cockpit and to the propeller that's on the front. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this design. It is a bit time consuming, but it's a lot of fun and it's really cool in the end. So it's definitely worth it. And please share any recreations with me on Facebook and Instagram. I'd love to see them and I will see you in my next video. Bye.